Um, so what about the others? I don't think uh, they read the message yet. No. Uh, well, basically, we can't have everybody at the same time, so we'll have to live with not having everybody at the same well, time. We, we don't have an agenda either way, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was going to, well, we said we dive into contextual uh, claims. You can do some first initial work and you can communicate that if you want to meet with the rest later. That's, I think that's, that's what will happen. Yeah, I think that's not time lost anyway. Um, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, because it's very, very preliminary. We basically don't have anything, so there's not much to to break that we might not uh, agree on anymore. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, let's do that. I'll share. Uh, no, I'll share. Give, give me a second. Okay. Uh, because I have tons of, of notes and these are probably horrible, hard to read, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but they're notes and this is my current thinking of this on this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so I try to do a bit of, you know, being more symbolic about this. Um, and basically saying that interpretation, uh, there's an interpretation going from uh, symbols uh, and, con uh, and another one, as you said, uh, going from contextual symbols. And basically I'm saying that one is the uh, erasure of the other, like erasing context. Um, is that the one? No, there's there's another one before that. Sorry, there's uh, this is just a stream of notes, so it's a bit. Uh, an expression was probably now uh, we have the definition function. The set of interpretations can ask as, as proxy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Given two concept. We assume there's a distinguishing symbol. No, that's different. Okay, no, that's not the one I was looking for. Where, or is that the one? Ah, it's on paper. Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, what I'm saying basically, it's it's a kind of like a category theory uh, commutative diagram, right? If you factor um interpretation of um if you take in interpretation of a sentence mm -hmm. and then you take the interpretations of the erasure of that sentence it should be a superset of the interpretation of the sentence and what i'm saying is that i believe that all interpretations should be erasure. And that's a choice, right? I mean, uh, obviously all interpretations of a sentence in context are valid interpretation of the sentence uh, and interpretations of, but I'm saying is an interpretation of, is a non-contextual interpretation of a sentence valid if it's not grounded in interpretation of the sentence? I'm not sure. That's kind of what I'm saying. Um, the and the other things is I'm looking at can I make uh, and this one's interesting actually. Um, interpretation is a non-functional relation from symbols to concepts. We don't have access to concepts. Uh, name of its inverse relation. Uh, again, this is not the, 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 the distinguished name. This is all the names by which we can name a concept. Uh, we may know enough about concepts if for every symbol we have the name of the interpretations of S, which would be a huge set. All the names of all the interpretations of a, a given symbol. Uh, this is way broader. Uh, what we'd really want is the name, all the names of any concept, but you don't have access to concept. So hence the round trip I'm doing. But if we take the intersections of those big things, I think we have something that is close enough to isomorphic to accessible concepts. Uh, and again, this is probably not true mathematically, 
uh, but I think it's true enough, especially if uh, we accept that if there's two concepts that are not distinguished this way, we can ask a human to create a distinguishing predicate. Uh, and then we can make that predicate part of the statement. And then we can have we can have using these distinguishers, we can make sure that there's homeomorphism between the inaccessible concepts and the uh, equivalence class of symbols. So that's so I don't know if that's helping. Um, well, it's a lot to take in, and it's uh, of course using a lot of the terminology that you highlighted in this semi-mathematical notation almost. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm I am trying to be formal about this, uh, and so it's a bit, and, and it's not finished, and I'm not fully happy with it. There's there's a second take later uh no, I, I guess my my main question or observation more and i think we've talked about this before like i i would never even if the concept is the goal i mean you you recognize it's not attainable in a way right yep um we do not have access to concepts as you write like why do you model concepts why 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 not just stop at equivalence clauses the, the, uh, what I'm trying to show here is that equivalence classes can serve as uh, something like concepts. Yeah, I, I, exactly. But I mean, an equivalence class as interpreted by one human, maybe one concept, interpreted by another, maybe another concept. So why ever? I, I, I think I understand from a philosophical point of view why you like the notion concept but from a modeling point of view I, I would never use it because it is something inaccessible so right i mean yeah if i would use it i would say yeah the goal of an equivalence clause is to represent a concept and that's probably where i would end yeah i'm trying to make the argument why is it a good proxy for the concept mm -hmm. and, and and that's what i'm trying to make formal and yep. saying uh basically because they're built using these distinguishing statements because they're built with you know and 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 and, and that anything that is distinguishably a different concept that is you can speak about it as being a different concept so you can explain so you can give a reason why it's different so you can give a predicate so blah 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 and this is how you build the uh how you carve the equivalence class into uh, something that corresponds to concepts. Mm. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to justify here. I'm not sure that answers the question you were asking, which is, what is? Uh, <laughs> um, a contextual uh, claim uh, or, or a contextual anything, right? Of course, contextual is an adjective. Um, and this is the relation to fragment. And let's actually go there. And mm -hmm. Let's for, forget this two seconds. Um, so we have agreed on fragment, which is now mm -hmm. aspirational. And we said we may create something like a digital fragment mm -hmm. to be more precise. Um, well, we'll see what whether or not it's distinct once we try to define contextual claim. There was the suggestion, I think. Yeah, um, I, I'm a bit uncomfortable working on contextual claim as an entity. Maybe I should say contextual fragment. Uh, but maybe you want to work on something different. I, I think part of the reason to work on it is exactly to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, if you look at the user story, because I think we introduced contextual claim for a user story, we maybe first need to check whether or not we're working on the same Good user point. story, which was where did we even write it? We should probably elevate it. I seem to remember we wrote it. I see. So do I. Yes. Yes. Can you uh, bump that to the top, please? Of course. Can probably become three. Yeah. What is the same contextual? Oh, no, we added this one. Not the right one. No, but we added it as part of a discussion. But then um, where the hell is the other one, right? Maybe we didn't call it contextual claim. 
Uh, maybe it's this only. Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. And there's this one too, actually. Yeah, I remember when we wrote the user story uh, while we're defining contextual claim, we didn't use, yeah. yeah. So it is the media We're, we're using one. fragment a lot more than contextual claim. Yes, which makes sense because for me, it's an essential part of it. And I think we somewhat agree on that. But, we do. Um, so we had maybe drag. Yeah, I think it's 11 that comes close to what I believe the reason was why we were working contextual claim. I'm I'm just looking at them all. I'm doing you multiple and given fragment and so then I the reader I want to view community interpretation and so then I can propose more specific interpretations and a more restricted scope. This one's interesting too for me because it's it's about it shows that the, the notion of restriction, right? Which for me is quite key. Mm -hmm. I want to view community interpretations of fragments. Yeah. So interpretation might actually be the best word for what we trying to add contextual claim for, uh, mm -hmm. given this user story, uh, so that I can propose a more specific interpretation. Yeah, I'm fine with nine or 11. I think both will help us uh, define the things we need to define. I think that's right. Um... I think I understand both. Yeah, I think nine, there's a bit There's a bit of rough edges around nine. It's important to me, but I think I need to work on it. Um, yeah, we, we added that one together. So maybe that's why we both understand within details. Probably if we discuss it with other people, it will be who? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. The, the, uh, the, because there, there's scope is of... undefined, but scope is relevant to define at some point because I know you care about scope. Yes, absolutely. The, 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 the... Okay, le le let me think a bit about user stories two seconds from scratch. One, one of the things is uh, sometimes it's going to be the opposite, right? And it's not a user story yet, but there's a user story where somebody says, oh, this is a plausible interpretation of that thing in abstracto. And then you say, that's nonsense. Nobody would ever think that, oh, okay, here's an example in the scope <laughs> where that interpretation was made. So you can ground an interpretation in the scope. So uh, your user story is to, uh, yeah. Your, your user story is to find uh, interpretations of entities or something. It would be nice to make more specific what of what um, as, as proof that things are interpreted in such a way in conversation. I think that's a valid user story. Yeah, let me add, add it. That. Let me add it. I think it's relevant. Um, uh, and yeah, you can even use concept here because I think indeed here the concept abstraction makes more sense. So this is a user story where the the, the the notion of concept that you've been trying to introduce will probably make sense. Maybe, I'm not sure. Let, let, let me try to write it. It's funny, it doesn't come to me that as a contributor, I want to... Uh... Well, a symbol rather. It might be what you call symbol, yeah. An interpretation of a symbol. As a concept. Mm. That could be a way to finally define symbol in a way that I can I can agree it's linked to a user story. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Using the symbol here is distinct from fragment, obviously. Yeah. Um, so this could probably lead us to defining a fragment as ha having a symbol. Yep, 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 yep. So is it that simple? Oh, so that. Uh, yeah, so that is important that, that, because yeah, I, yeah, yeah. but uh, you, you, so that I agreed with, so that uh, that I can deliver a proof that f people interpret things as such. Yeah, uh, so I want to ground. So a very concrete example would be, uh, oh, but nobody would think that Paris is Paris Hilton. No, people do here. Yeah, exactly. So that I can support that. Uh, nobody would interpret. The, the world is round, round as meaning anything different than spherical outside. No, they do. Yeah. Okay. I think I think this is a good story, actually. Let's. I mean, it's not the one that that we were working on, but I'm no. also fine with working on that one. Yeah, I I, I think let's go on this one. I think I think. It's but it's good. worth noting; it's not going to help us get near to contextual claim load. It will. No. Fragment and context. I mean, how's that different from a? Okay, if you think yeah, it will, then, then that's enough reason. But I, I, I envision this will help us define symbol. It will help yeah, us it, define it, it, concepts. 
it, it, see, the, the point is, sorry, it, you, you're right and you're wrong. Uh, in this, this, for example, it, it, the examples will be more obvious with entity and context, but it's still true of claim in context. Uh, but I'm not certain that claim in context is a contextual claim. And even though, ah, do you see that the contextual for me, claim the user story might be a different entity than here the abstraction you're introducing makes sense. So for once I'm agreeing with the abstraction you're using as concept. But I guess what I'm arguing for in, in user stories where the, the, um, the concept would be a contextual claim, like nobody would uh, interpret that contextual claim as another one. No, actually that might work. Um, I guess the main reason for adding contextual claims for me is more the user story 11 that was originally there. It, it is so that you can pull in people into a broader discussion. I, okay, let, let's look again. I want to introduce uh, 12 one. actually. Move because now, yeah, yeah, things have moved, of course. I want to highlight a fragment so that it can be discussed in a broader concept. Context. So I'm not certain this resulting contextual claim would be the same as the... the... Okay, okay, I think so myself. So what, what makes you think they're different or, or should I explain how they're the, I think they're the same? How do you want to go about this? That's actually worth discussing. Can you go back to three, the one you added on top? Of course. Okay. So we have some working notion that the, the, the one from 12 is uh, a fragment, someone that uttered it uh, in a media source, right? So three yeah. here, as a contributor, I want to ground an interpretation of a symbol as a concept using an example from a fragment in concept. Well, first of all, it's a specific one. It's Yeah, it's very specific. You're talking about a fragment here, not necessarily a claim, but a claim could be an instance of that. Yes. So you're arguing that fragmenting context is essentially a, uh, um, a super type of um, claiming context. Correct. Isn't it more symbol in context you mean than here? Because adopting the well, notion of fragments, it, it, it uh, well, a, a has fragment, context. Good point. Uh, good point. A fragment, I, I would say a fragment is a symbol in context, right? Exactly. So then, then we yep. don't have to say fragment in context from a fragment. Uh, and yeah, we and already I, have a defined because we have fragments. Yeah, I, but the problem is uh, maybe this is where the distinction between fragments and digital fragments become use, becomes useful. Or oh, the that... distinction between contextual claims, which are claims and fragments. Because if user story three here only needs the notion of fragments, then we have it. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, uh, no, okay, sure. Uh, from f so that I... But see where, uh, when I say using an example from a fragment, what I want to rely on is the interpretation of that fragment. Yes. So, so, so this is why, and, and I think I need to make, say that using an example. Yeah, yeah the, the, the interpretation is missing from the fragment, but then yes. So, but what you call fragments in context is essentially an interpretation. I think interpretation is a good word for what you're trying to define and it might be the abstraction of a contextual claim. Yeah, if, but what I want to say is the fragment doesn't carry the interpretation inherently. No, no, right? no, no. We, we agree on that given the definition good. we wrote up. Yeah. Good, 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 good. So no, maybe they are the same, except that indeed, uh, Yes, so this is a user story that shows that, well, it's useful the, regardless of, of what the fragment is, uh, see multiple interpretations of that. Mm. Yeah, I think the key for me here that I would add as an entity is interpretation. 
And I think interpretation can be a super class of contextual claim, maybe. Oh, interesting. Um, I, I would not see that, uh, but that's interesting. I need to see whether I'm using super, uh, super class correct. I mean that no, interpretation class, is the abstraction the and contextual claim is the most specific one. It, 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 no, no, it's, 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 not, it's, it's not that that's the problem. It's that okay. for me, um, interpretation is a relation. Yeah, I understand you, you, you remove it, but if you want to, yeah, okay, I, I see your point. You want to maintain interpretation as only one part of the entity that I would be calling the interpretation, right? Um, if we said before that a contextual claim is a fragment of interpretation and a uh, media source, well, fragments already contained in media source. The, 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 the interpretation of... Um... Do they ever go separately? Let's put it that way. I think why I'm okay with calling the entity interpretation is it is the interpretation you're interested in here. And an interpretation just always happens to relate to a fragment. Can an interpretation relate to anything different than a fragment? Of course. It can relate to, uh, to um, a usable claim, for example, or, or to a usable entity definition. In case of ambiguity, it's 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 see the the okay. I see interpretation as the relation, and then the whole question is: Do we look at the relation as a whole or each single interpretation? And this is where there's a bit of linguistic ambiguity, but I don't think that's a big deal. Um, but it's relating a symbol, contextual or not, to uh what i call a concept which is an equivalence class of symbols with a unique representative yeah. with a distinguished okay. representative. I, I get you and this is part of you're saying that uh, i think i i wrote a lengthy thread on, on on why it might be problematic to call all of these interpretation okay one reason here is they are separate user stories right i mean if if you're going to argue that when you suggest that uh, one usable claim is a potential interpretation of another usable claim, the so that is going to be drastically different. Also, it's specifically working on claims in this case. Here, sure, it's working on fragments because the use case dictates that you're interested in interpretations of fragments. The question is, what is the common abstraction in here? Like, does, does user story three here, as you wrote it, do you really? Okay, so suppose we're uh, talking about usable claims in a claim repository, and you yeah. want to use the abstraction there. I want to grant an interpretation of a symbol, the symbol associated, I guess, with my usable claim, which would yeah. be a declarative sen sentence. Yeah. So the, you're arguing that you're in a claim repository, you're looking at a usable claim, uh, and you want to argue that, that people do interpret it as another concept which would be the super clause of usable claim okay let, let, let's say we're speaking about claims here uh, the, 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 uh, okay I think I think I think I've got a way to to say this there's usable claims and there's minimally ambiguous and minimally of course is at a point in time and it's shifting but there's minimally ambiguous usable claims because we accept there's ambiguity and in that way we can say that, I keep saying uh, interpretation relates symbols to concepts with very equivalence class of symbols, but we could have a shortcut where the interpretation yields us to the distinguished representative, that is to a minimally ambiguous usable claim, okay? Uh, which would be the distinguished representative. And that's, that's a kind of uh, way to keep everything at the symbol level and erase the equivalence class. Uh, and what I'm saying is, so, 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 so this is a way of hiding the magic. Uh, hi, Tim. We are trying to uh, make the user stories. Oh, do you hear us? Do you hear us? Not if you do. I no, assume not. apparently not. Uh, so I hear you. I just uh, my wife was talking at the same time, so I didn't hear you talking to me that second. 
so Fair enough. I have to head out in 20 minutes, but um, yeah, uh, a recap of we, we're essentially discussing whether or not it makes sense to talk about contextual claim next as we originally planned, uh, because Mark Antoine is not certain whether or not it's the same as an interpretation of fragments. I think so, yes, but yeah. uh, well, uh, no. Uh, the, 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 uh, I'm <laughs> okay. No, I'm not certain because I don't know what you mean by interpretation of. Fragments. Yeah, exactly. But that's we're, 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 we're trying to understand. Maybe uh, just quickly read uh, line four, use of story three that is shared. Um, maybe a. Uh, uh, yeah, as a period of grand, kind of an example from an interpretation of a fragment that can support it. That first interpretation as a contributor, I want to ground an interpretation of a symbol as a concept using an example from an interpretation of a fragment. A, a, a simple example would be you're having a discussion and uh, all of a sudden somebody says like, uh, this could um, be interpreted. This, that, that means that, and then you want to find proof like, oh, but nobody would interpret that like that. And then you want to say, well, well that's two separate things, people do right? interpret One is, sorry? Yeah, well, one is like the contextual claim and the other is supporting evidence, which I would say supporting evidence is a separate use case and we should separate it as a separate use case. Maybe. Supporting evidence we, we want to do for lots of cases and not just. Yeah, yeah, this, this is a supporting evidence case precisely. So yes. then I would simplify and get rid of the interpretation of a symbol as a concept and all that stuff. I would start with a simpler thing. But we don't even have argument, and and you know I would oh, guess no, that, that, that remains... okay, 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 okay. This is not supporting evidence for a claim. It's supporting uh, evidence for an interpretation of a claim, which is a distinct thing. Well, is I mean, is is uh, like a debate over interpretation a different set of entities than any other kind of debate? is I, you know something I, I would my instinct would say no we want to reuse the the claim and argument structure for anything that's quote unquote debatable but uh point uh let me think about this uh but it is in in a way it is different because we're kind of crossing hierarchies here uh in that yes we're arguing and that's claim and debate but we're arguing about what does this symbol mean? And that's kind of the building blocks of the claims. So we're we're kind of reaching downwards in the abstraction hierarchy, and it's 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 a bit of a cross-level thing. So yeah, I think there is something substantially different happening. Though your point is well taken that we may want to reuse the higher level constructs at that level. I, I definitely always intended to do so. For me, these are different types of claims. Like an interpretation is probably just uh, that can be interpreted as that, which is a claim in itself that just is a well pre pre structured claim, a claim with a very well defined structure. I mean, it, 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 to some degree, isn't it like meta claims? It's like mm -hmm. the, the meta debate. And, and it would be strange to say that the meta claim structure is on a more fundamental lower level than the non meta, right? Uh, very interesting, uh, because yeah, for me, it obviously is in that it is about defining the building blocks of the claim. It's also interesting, but, but because point, what does that mean in this, in, in this user story, right? The interpretation of a fragment is not just a claim, because the claim in its abstract doesn't mean that anyone interpreted it as such. It actually means that people agree with the claim. So yes. the, the evidence here is not just a claim, it's a claim and the fact that people agree with the claim, or at least some people. Correct. That is what Correct. you could call the interpretation of a fragment. Yep, 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 yep. No, no, that's true. That's true. Uh, the, uh, this, this is a strange case where, uh, not strange, but uh, uh, an interesting case where the existence of agreement is proof enough of the claim. Yeah, yeah, because you only need one person to say, I interpret it as such to prove that, yeah. Yeah, it's a valid interpret. It's a plausible interpretation. But well, where the, does the, that leave us with the overlap of contextual claim? Right, because for me, a contextual claim, yes, probably, uh, yeah, it means indeed like, yes, this fragment can be interpreted as, yeah. So in, in essence, it may be the same. So, 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 
the, yeah, I, th I, I think I think good. Uh, so we agree that fragment. Uh, I mean, basically, but for me, context contextual is an adjective, and uh, or. or but it's and, not just the ex ex contextual claim. It's the fact that people, some people, agree with the contextual claim. If you want to say that this is the same contextual claim as we we've been trying to find before, this user story will want to point out that people agree with the contextual claim. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, is that so? Or, or, or Yeah. No, no, they, they have to agree that it's a valid interpretation. They don't have to agree with the claim. They have to say... Uh, OK, it depends on what a contextual claim is, which we're trying to define. Uh, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. the best way forward to see whether or not these are similar is by defining one or the other and then seeing where, where it gets us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but, but I really I really like the, the, the question. Uh, I, I want to dwell a bit more on what Tim is pointing out, because it is it is interesting, the question of which is the first level and how is it different from other claims? Um, I'll have to think harder about that one. The is it's a meta claim, but on the other hand, it is about the building blocks of the claim. It's saying this is what this claim means. Um, I, yeah, and I, I was go I, I was starting a whole thing, and I, I think I do want to go through that actually. Uh, I let me let me actually go through this. Sorry, this is more abstract than definitions, but. Uh, I may want to revisit that diagram. This was very much work in progress. Uh, but basically, I was saying, you, you know, we have uh, a bare symbol which we can interpret, and that's a bare interpretation as a concept. And again, concept is an equivalence class of symbols. Contextual symbol can be interpreted in context. We can erase the context of the of a contextual symbol to get a bare symbol. And but the concept is we choose, we pick in the equivalence class a representative, a distinguished representative, which is a bare symbol, which is how we display the concept. Um, and the that way, the context symbol is really a pair of bare symbol plus source, well, a triple with the uh, fragment locator. Um, now, what I was saying is we could cheat and say, really, what we're doing, what, what interpretation is, right? Interpretation is from uh, symbol to concept and then have the representative and just cheat and say, there's the representative interpretation, which is from context symbol to bare symbol or from bare symbol to bare symbol, which is just saying, you know, go to the concept, pick the representative, and you have the what you will display anyway as the interpretation of the. Yeah, and there, there is no concept really. I think there was a point we started with before Timothy the, the, arrived. The, the, it, it, it's not, it exists. It, it, okay, the concept, yeah, it, the real concepts are inaccessible. And here, really, when I say concept, I'm cheating because I'm saying equivalence class of. Uh, Symbols, probably. Of symbols, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And, and and it's already a proxy for the concept. In, uh, in topic mapping, they speak about topic proxy all the time. It's we're dealing, the topics are inaccessible, we're dealing with topic proxies or subject proxies, they call mm -hmm. them actually. Um, but on the other hand, it's not because this doesn't exist in the system that the diagram doesn't make sense. We're doing, like, even if we, express it as context symbol to bear symbol, the diagram still conceptually goes through, well, we're going to a concept and we're picking, this is how we'll design, we'll name it. And it's, it's a relation. Um, so this triangle in particular is not, or this cycle, they're not commutative as such, but there's a kind of, um, there's a version of bare interpretation that goes to bare symbol that is commutative with this diagram, if you will. Um, 
the 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 the, the, the you, you I, can I, resolve these two arrows as a single arrow, which is and and state interpretation is only happening at level of symbol and erase the equivalence classes. I I, I think I'm not certain that's what you mean, but I mean I don't think in practice people will say that symbols are interpreted as equivalence classes, concept, proxies, whatever you want to call it. I think they'll always say it's interpreted as a symbol. And then maybe on a higher level, you can start finding equivalences among symbols. Well, the, the, the equivalence is, is important because the um, people won't generally agree on which bare symbol is representative. So you need to create equivalence class. But that might also mean that they don't agree on the concept. Which it is may or may not, reason. that's my point. It's going to be much easier to say this symbol is an interpretation of another symbol with additional formalisms and whatever, than it is going to be to agree on and having to see through the entire notion of the concept, which is a full equivalence class. I agree that exposing people to equivalence class is probably going to be a non-starter, uh, but I do say that equivalence they'll have to be exposed, and it's like, okay, you say it this way, I say it this way, is it the same thing? And that's yeah. equivalence. Yeah, it's, that... it's, it's uh, the, the the notion of the equivalence clause and trying to agree on them to uh, uncover concepts is is valid, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think yeah. it's a separate use case. I think the interpretation part. Yeah. The interpretation part will be seen as will be perceived as symbol to symbol. Uh, I don't think people will think of them as equivalence classes. There, I agree with you, uh, because equivalence class is a very very abstract concept. <laughs> and there's no question there. Uh, on the other hand, I kind of need it for my data model, but. Maybe not. I'm. I'm still. I'm. You know. I'm always wavering. Can I just use the symbol? And I think no, because at least for at least one reason is that I want to distinguish when I'm using the symbol as a raw symbol, which has many interpretation, or as a representative of an equivalence class, in which case it has a single interpretation. Uh, so, so, so there is that distinction at the very once least. Once you use the equivalence clause, it also implies that the person using it agrees with the full equivalence and all equi entailing equivalence relations yeah that's true but or at least that is made explicit and and mm. if they disagree how to disagree becomes possible you can yes. say well i introduce a new distinction or uh i want to introduce a new equivalence like there are way like set ways to disagree with the equivalence class that's the whole point of making that explicit yeah and the act of saying that a symbol can be interpreted as a concept is the equivalent of saying that a symbol can be interpreted as each of the symbols within the equivalence class. Correct. Mm. And if you disagree, then okay, introduce, yes. please introduce a so That's what I mean by I, I see the one building on top of the other. And that only works if that action, that if that constraint between these two is yeah, indeed made explicit and people consciously do that. Yeah, and I'm real. I realized when I was writing that it's not exactly an equivalence class, because in an equivalence class, things belong to only one equivalence class. Whereas the whole point of symbols is that they can be interpreted as many concepts, and hence they belong to many equivalence class. So it's 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 a slightly different mathematical object, uh, well, or even widely different mathematical object, and which is why I started writing it in this weird way about, you know, uh, F minus one of F of S <laughs> uh, and then intersections thereof, arbitrary intersections on the reverse image. Anyway, the, um, the set of all symbols that could be said to be equivalent along at least one interpretation which is a ridiculous set but and then you do intersections of those it's a bit weird i'm still i'm still working this through this one i'm not sure i have the whole the whole formula there i'm not sure intersection is enough and this is why i get into distinguishers um i'm trying to get to pin down that mathematical concept mm. anyway what the reason i go through all this is that we 
I'm, I'm, I wanted to really insist that you, you keep speaking about interpretation as an object. Is it the same as a contextual claim? It's like, no, the interpretation is a relation between symbols. And yes, of course, it's as such, it's a claim saying this is an interpretation of that, but it is, uh, you can understand this symbol as this symbol. Uh, and the as probably has to be usable, non-contextual, but the source, you can understand this, can be done either in context or out of context. And you keep saying those are different interpretation actions, maybe, uh, but I keep saying the interpretation of bare symbols, of, of, of usable claims, for example, should be grounded in interpretation of contextual symbols, which again, you may or may not agree with. Uh, and I don't think it's- Can you repeat the letter, the interpretation of? The, the, the interpretation of a usable claim should be grounded ideally in the interpretation of a contextual claim. Uh, I'm not saying it's necessary. I'm saying that this I, is I, I think that's one of the goals that Timothy and I disagree on. I mean, I for us, uh, I think I the whole point is to try to remove the context. I'm not saying that the, the context user stories aren't relevant, but I no, mean, no, I for, for me, the, the, the use case to do the same would be that it is by uncovering disagreement, mostly on relevance arguments, et cetera, that you uncover that you want to add a different, what you call interpretation of a usable claim, more specific uh, form, channel to specific uh, in this case. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I understand why you want to do that. And it's certainly not invalid. My, my uh, hobby horse is, I think the, the, the in real arguments will often go back and forth between um, the abstract, usable, decontextualized claims and the, oh yeah, but in this case, it was this and, and, and the, 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 the contextualized and- um, But you can, think, but discussing, I mean, that's the whole point, discussing whether or not somebody, because you're missing the somebody, like the, 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 the interpretation- No, the contextual is bringing back the, the somebody. Interpretation of one yeah. usable claim as another usable claim, we remove the somebody. That's why it's not interpretation as in this user story you wrote up here in three, because this user story relies on the fact that some somebody believes in that yep. claim. So it's something more. Hence, it's yep, not yep, yep. the I same agree. I agree totally. I agree totally. Well, I, I, what I'm saying is it is the same interpretation because the uh, what's the point of an interpretation of a decontextualized claim that nobody believes in? This is what I'm saying. You want to ground- The point is to express the claim it's about the claim what's the point of a claim the earth is flat when nobody believes in it it's a similar statement you're making right now i mean i think it's different but okay let me justify this um the, 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 okay first there is somebody believing in the earth and flat or at least claiming to well, there is somebody uh, that believes that has interpreted something as some or another and that's why it gets added so yes ideally the person that adds a more specific form also expresses belief in that more in that relation <laughs> that looks oh lord i think i have to take this apologies on the log ah, no it's okay my wife took it um but the, the, the mere fact that interpretation in one case implies pointing somebody that believes in it and the other it doesn't for me makes it too overloaded to call it the same thing that, 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 that that's what i mean like they already i'm fine with both user stories and they're valid and all no, that, no, i understand that, what you're saying that, that's the problem i have here i'm not sure that in the other case do we care that somebody believes in it you're right we don't uh, in this case, we do. Okay, fair enough. The, because the notion of plausible interpretation is absolutely... The, 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 I mean, what do we mean by plausible interpretation, right? And even, even believe is uh, a bit overloaded here. Uh, let me go a bit, dig a bit further in this because it's interesting. What we want is not just say, oh, it's being used this way, but it's being used this way in something 
that we can believe was possibly in good faith, right? There, there is the whole question of bad faith arguments. Is that belief? Um, this was used this way, but nobody would believe it, it would be done in good faith. You know, the, now, of course, we're getting into, uh, in French, we say procès d'intention, uh, trial of intention, uh, which is absolutely... And we are getting more to contextual claims, and contextual claims imply that somebody has interpreted it. I think a contextual claim will probably include... Well, there's two. That's why we need to define it. Uh, I, I think a contextual claim includes a person that does the interpretation, but whether or not that, I think that implies that the person doing the interpretation believes in the interpretation, but not even necessarily in the usable claim that is being interpreted, if that makes sense. So those are two distinct actions yes, yet again. Yes, that's what I was trying to say. I agree yeah. totally. The, b b believing in interpretation and believing in the claim are yes. two distinct exactly. beliefs. Exactly. Uh, and we're interested but, in the But a contextual the claim entails a belief in the interpretation. You're not going to add contextual claims well maybe you will no, arguably you won't are you going to add this fragment can be interpreted but i don't interpret it as such the, the okay okay that's that's interesting because because i think the way you're using contextual claim it kind of contains the interpretation for me it's it a distinct yeah. object yeah uh for me contextual claim is much closer to fragment so we are okay that's good we're but that, that's why we we set on the agenda to try to define it but um uh, i have to go so you guys can pick up from there i guess and then i'll watch the recording after okay um, but yeah I, I think you understand my main yes i do discrepancy so yes there's definitely overlap but there's also some some things different in these user stories fair enough i i i'm i think i'm getting it so let's and i'm fine with defining there. one first or the other i have no uh no preference in in order so but what but i think want? what you, what you call contextual claim is what i call interpretation really maybe okay see you next week see you next week bye Um, I have a I have a really busy day, so much so that I'm doing three things at once: listening to you, trying to write code, and and deal with problems with the <laughs> trip. But um, you know, I guess, and, and so like I, I can't stay through the hour. Um, Fair. But I guess one thing I was just kind of listening in the background, and one thing I I want to maybe understand uh, is how I was seeing interpretations and contextual claims working as yep. opposed to i guess what it sounds like your model is but um you know i, I think that a contextual claim requ requires a fragment because you're referring to something right that's the context yep. the fragment is part of something bigger yep. um right so a contextual claim is different than a standalone claim in that sense that's, um, yeah, correct and then also like a standalone claim, I don't think should have interpretation. I don't want to have an interpretation. Well, well, um, this is this is where I speak of minimally minimally ambiguous. Um, I, I think you can make a standalone claim and discover later on that it was ambiguous, and uh, then it you need to have a kind of pointer. Oh, by the way, this could mean this or that. Uh, and, and, and the whole point but, for me is to distinguish yeah. the notion of standalone claim from minimally ambiguous standalone claim. Uh, that, that, that's one thing. I, I see that. Um, I guess I'm okay. I'm okay with that from the perspective of, in other words, the, the relationship is interpretation, but it's more like resolves the ambiguity in yeah. this way and resolve the ambiguity that way. Um, yeah. And I, I have to think if that's different from interpretation. Um, because for, for example, um, I, don't, I don't want interpretation to be an equivalent class. Um, I don't want us to be saying that, you know, immigration is bad really means, you know, that really I, I'm interpreting that as you're talking about illegal immigration. Um, I don't want there to be an equivalence between the claim immigration is bad and I've interpreted that as illegal immigration and therefore they're equivalent. 
Oh no 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 that would be that would be terrible. No no the equivalence class is really about two different formulation. Like the the, the the really good example we had recently of equivalence class was the earth is earth is exactly like an approximate sphere or earth is ex or is earth is approximately like a perfect sphere. <laughs> that that was a good that was a very good example. Right. But but no I agree the the whole the whole point of the distinguishers is to distinguish something like immigration is bad versus illegal immigration is bad. And what do you mean by? <laughs> and so the the, 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 the uh, equivalence class have to be uh, fine, fine grained. Right. Um, and, and that would be, and, and to me that, that that sort of thing is from one standalone claim to the next. And I, I was seeing like a, a contextual claim being a fragment with symbols, um, but it's not any kind of fragment. It would be a fragment that could be interpreted as a claim, right? Um, I, you know, I don't know if that's in the design or if that's just in the content of the fragment that people decide it can be interpreted as a claim. But then essentially you have your contextual claim and then you have different, this contextual claim can be interpreted as this standalone claim. And it can be interpreted as this standalone claim. You can interpret this as standalone claim. And so that's an interpreted as relationship between a contextual claim and a uh, standalone claim, which yep. I see is different from one it, standalone it, it, claim. Exactly, exactly. You have, well, you have, uh, I don't see it as different, but see, suppose you have immigration. Maybe it's only bad. different in, in terms of what you have at each end of the the relationship, but yeah, okay. Yeah, pretty much only, yes. So, so yeah. in one case you have, say, uh, let's take your example. It's a good one. Uh, immigration is bad as a standalone claim. And then you can say, oh, does that mean all immigration is bad? Uh, that's, that's ambiguous. That's standalone, but it's ambiguous. So you could yeah, yeah. interpret as all immigration is bad, illegal immigration, blah, 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 blah. Or, or and then you can decompose bad and blah, blah, blah. So you can do all these interpretations as something more specific, or you could say it's a generic, any uh immigration is bad and 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 that's that's also a valid interpretation okay. and yeah, then there's, there's an interesting thing here which is um you know i kind of the interpreted as it can be interpreted as and and you're talking about agreeing with the interpretation or not right and when we're talking about something about immigration or something that's ambiguous um yeah it can be interpreted as both so I would agree that it could be interpreted as both, as opposed to, I, you know, with a with a contextual claim, maybe the debate is more about how it should be interpreted, right? Exactly. And there's no should be interpreted with ambiguity in a standalone claim. Exactly. I was getting there. I was getting there. I agree totally. Okay. The the, the if you take interpret uh, immigration is bad in a specific document, then. In theory, all of those interpretations could apply, but in practice, because of the document's context, you can see, oh, here they're talking about illegal immigration. And the local interpretation of that contextual claim is constrained by the document context. Uh, but so, so, so that's one way. So if you're going from uh, standalone and then you're looking at the contextual from the point of view of standalone. But I'm saying it goes the other way also, is that when you say can be interpreted as for standalone, it's like ideally you should, at least if you're attacked, you should be able to justify it and say, you know, is, is that, does that ever happen? Well, yes, here it happens in that, context, in that contextual document. We see that this interpretation has been made. And, and, and I want to be able to say, yeah, yeah, but but and this is where like I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not we need this interpreted as relationship when you're going for removing ambiguity because I think those relationships are implicit in the relationship between entities and definitions, right? Where you know if one is a superset of another and that sort of thing, um, that's sort of there there wouldn't be a relationship there because of the relationship between definitions. And I know there's been a discussion about, uh, you know, maybe there's too many possible relationships and those are the two interpretations that are most important. There, there's certain, there might be some other reasons 
for explicitly saying these are interpretations or, or uh, resolving ambiguity as opposed to other. Um, um, the, 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 what you're saying is that a lot of the claim ambiguity resolution will be transported to the definition resolution. And I perfectly agree with that, uh, entity definition resolution. But a lot of what I'm saying applies to entity definition, right? When I say interpreted as, I'm less worried about how is this claim interpreted or how is this entity name interpreted among many entity definitions, right? And so the same discussion happens at that level, A. Um, B, I think that we'll have the same phenomenon that when an entity is used in a claim, the claim itself gives a bit of tiny context to the entity definition, which probably constrains meanings. When I say uh, uh, Paris is nice, if I say Paris is nice to walk with, Obviously, I'm, I'm talking about a person. If I say Paris is nice to walk in, <laughs> I'm probably talking about a place. <laughs> uh, you know, there, there, there's, there's inherent constraint in the claim that constrains right. the free interpretation. Right. And that way, it's like contextual. It's the same operation, right? When you have more context, you have more constraints on the possible interpretations. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know if it matters so much. Um, ah, the, 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 the reason I keep bringing it up and, and perfectly valid is that I'm basically I'm a bit weary of uh, the possibility of the debate getting very abstract and sterile. And I say, I'm saying if it does so, it is good to ground the interpretations in concrete examples and you know the whole the power of specificity sure. thing that I but yeah. but but I do agree there is a power to abstraction and and I think you always have to walk up and down the abstraction ladder uh, because there is a power to abstraction and there is a power to specificity it goes both ways uh, right. the uh, I, th I think the uh, uh, power of specificity thing was a bit overstating the case, but against abstraction, that is. But it, they had a, a very powerful point about abstraction. And this is why I, I, I insist on keeping uh, contextual claims and fragment origin, because it is a very good way to go down the abstraction la ladder. And okay, what, what do you, can, can, can we look at specific cases where this has been defended and why and get back to the specific stories and see if it makes sense? And when we make an abstraction, okay, would it actually, like it becomes a fact checking, right? Would it actually apply to the specific case? And, and, and for me, keeping origins as a way to grounding it in uh, story, uh, you know, more specific conversations with concrete people discussing concrete cases. I believe in the value of abstraction for communication, right? We, there's too many concrete cases and we can't always go to the cases and we need to be able to abstract them into bigger chunks for communication purpose. But, so anyway, that's the- Right. But the, uh, um, yeah. So a, a uh, uh, you know, a side thought here um, that I had is, uh, I was thinking about interpreted as, is a um, is a claim, right? Yep. Can be interpreted as at least yep. as a claim. Yep. Um, okay. And and in the case of con uh, contextual claims being interpreted as standalone claims, um, what you have there is pulling out our old language. Um, a group of possibly potentially mutually exclusive claims, right? Yes. That's kind of the goal of debating contextual claims is, yeah. is you have a mutually mutual exclusion group as opposed to when, when you're talking about um, context, uh, a standalone claim interpreted can be interpreted as other standalone claim and you could have an array that's not mutually exclusive. 
Correct. That's yes, yes, and yeah, yes. That's the point. Of, uh, that's the ambiguity. Is we agree it can be interpreted as there, there, there can be residual ambiguity even in context, but uh, in fact, maybe maybe it's different. It can be versus should be, right? Should be yeah. interpreted as is yeah, what, yeah. The debate you're having. Yeah. The, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. The, 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 we'll probably do a kind of plausibility ranking as most plausibly can be interpreted as, or this interpretation is more plausible than this one, given. Well, that's, and that's, that's the resolution of mutually, mutually exclusive claims. That's, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, All yeah, of yeah. them have that question of, yeah. Yeah, but it, what, I, what I'm saying is it's possible that it won't be re fully resolved. I mean, we'll certainly be able to exclude certain interpretations, and it's entirely possible that a few will we'll end up with a few plausible interpretations could happen. Right. No, but you know, any individual can express their percentage agreement of each, right? Yep. Uh, yep, 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 yep. I mean, fifty percent plausible. The other two are twenty-five percent or whatever. Um, but, or I just agree with that interpretation. Um, all right. Uh, I need to get going. I've got too much going on. But okay, um, fair enough. Any, any last thoughts you want to toss out there? Uh, not at this point, except uh, I, 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 this was a useful conversation and the one about layers is definitely one I want to pursue. I don't think there's anything contradicting what I'm saying, but I'll definitely think about layers and thank you for just bringing that up. Cool. Okay. Have okay. a good weekend. You too. Bye. Bye. Where's the control?